The city of Ebonridge had always held an air of mystery, its Gothic architecture standing tall against the perpetual grey skies. Detective Marcus Blackthorne was known for his unconventional methods, but none were more peculiar than his ability to communicate with the dead. This gift, or curse as he sometimes called it, had led him to solve many cases that others deemed impossible. As he walked through the rain-soaked streets, the echoes of past whispers guided his steps. This latest case was particularly haunting. The spirit of a young woman named Emily had reached out to Marcus, her voice filled with desperation. She had been murdered, and her killer was still at large. Emily's ghost appeared before him, her translucent form flickering in and out of view. Find him, she pleaded, her eyes filled with a sorrow that transcended death. Marcus nodded solemnly, determined to bring her justice. Emily's last known location was the abandoned Hawthorne Manor, a decaying relic on the outskirts of the city. The manor had a dark history, whispered about in hushed tones by the townsfolk. Marcus pushed open the creaking gates and made his way up the overgrown path. The air grew colder with each step, a sure sign that spirits lingered nearby. The manor loomed before him, its windows like eyes watching his every move. Inside, the atmosphere was thick with the presence of the past. Dust-covered furniture lay scattered, and cobwebs hung like ghostly drapes. Marcus reached into his coat and pulled out a small silver locket, a relic given to him by his grandmother, said to enhance his connection with the spirit world. Holding the locket, he called out to Emily. Her figure materialized once more, pointing towards a hidden doorway beneath the grand staircase. Marcus descended into the darkness, the air growing colder still. The basement was a labyrinth of forgotten rooms and hidden secrets. Emily led him to a small chamber, its walls lined with old photographs and newspaper clippings. In the center of the room lay a blood-stained journal. As Marcus opened it, the truth began to unfold, a tale of jealousy, betrayal, and a pact with forces beyond comprehension. The answers were here, but so were more questions, and Marcus knew this was only the beginning. The journal's entries revealed a web of deceit and dark rituals. Marcus read about a secret society known as the Order of Eternal Night, which had been operating in the shadows of Ebonridge for centuries. Their leader, a man known only as the Watcher, had a reputation for manipulating the supernatural to his advantage. Emily's involvement with the Order was reluctant. She had discovered their dark practices and intended to expose them, but they silenced her before she could. Emily's spirit flickered beside Marcus, urging him to continue. Her presence grew stronger the deeper he delved into the journal's pages. He found mentions of other victims, each one silenced by the order for uncovering their secrets. The journal also contained cryptic references to a hidden chamber within Hawthorne Manor, where the Watcher conducted his most sinister rituals. Marcus knew this chamber held the key to unraveling the mystery and bringing Emily's killer to justice. As Marcus explored further into the manor, he encountered more spectral entities. Some were benign, guiding him with whispers and fleeting touches, while others were hostile, their anger and sorrow palpable. Each ghost had a story, and each story added another piece to the puzzle. Marcus could feel the weight of their unfinished business pressing down on him, urging him to act quickly. The hidden chamber was finally revealed behind a false wall in the manor's library. The room was filled with ancient tomes, ritualistic artifacts, and a large ornate mirror that seemed to pulse with an eerie light. As Marcus stepped inside, the temperature plummeted. The Watcher's presence was strong here, and Marcus could feel his malevolent gaze upon him. He steeled himself, knowing that confronting the Watcher was inevitable. Suddenly the mirror's surface rippled, and the Watcher's figure appeared. He was a tall, gaunt man with hollow eyes that seemed to see into Marcus's very soul. You should not have come here, the Watcher intoned, his voice a chilling whisper. Marcus gripped his locket tighter, drawing strength from Emily and the other spirits. I'm here to end this, he declared, his voice unwavering. The room filled with a spectral wind as the Watcher's laughter echoed, signaling the beginning of a supernatural showdown. The confrontation with the Watcher began with an eerie silence, broken only by the soft rustle of ancient pages and the distant howls of restless spirits. Marcus felt the weight of countless eyes upon him as he faced the Watcher's spectral form. The air crackled with supernatural energy and the room seemed to pulse with a life of its own. Marcus took a deep breath, channeling his focus through the silver locket. Why did you kill Emily? He demanded, his voice steady despite the fear gnawing at his core. 
The watcher's hollow eyes narrowed, and a sinister smile played across his lips. She threatened our order, he replied, his voice echoing with a dark resonance. She discovered secrets not meant for mortal eyes. Her silence was necessary to preserve our power. Marcus felt a surge of anger at the callousness of the Watcher's words. The spirits around him seemed to react as well, their presence intensifying as if urging Marcus to fight back against this malevolence. Drawing strength from the spirits, Marcus stepped closer, the locket glowing faintly in his hand. Her death will not be in vain, he vowed. The Watcher's laughter filled the chamber, a cold mocking sound that chilled Marcus to the bone. You are but one man, the Watcher sneered and you cannot stand against the eternal night. With a wave of his hand, the Watcher summoned dark tendrils of shadow that lashed out at Marcus, forcing him to dodge and weave through the room. Marcus's mind raced, searching for a way to counter the Watcher's dark magic. He remembered a passage from the journal mentioning the power of truth and light against the shadows. Focusing his energy, he raised the locket high, its glow intensifying. By the light of truth, I banish you, he shouted. The locket emitted a brilliant flash, and the shadows recoiled, shrieking as they were pushed back. The Watcher hissed in anger, his form flickering and distorting under the assault. In that moment of vulnerability, Marcus saw his chance. He lunged forward, pressing the locket against the Watcher's chest. The reaction was immediate and violent. The chamber erupted in a whirlwind of spectral light and shadow. The Watcher's screams filled the air as his form began to disintegrate, his power unraveling before Marcus's eyes. With a final desperate cry, the Watcher was consumed by the light, leaving nothing but silence and a faint shimmer in the air. The hidden chamber fell silent after the Watcher's defeat, the supernatural energy dissipating into a faint, lingering chill. Marcus stood alone, breathing heavily, his hand still clutching the now dimmed silver locket. The spirits that had once crowded the room began to fade, their whispers turning into a soft, collective sigh of relief. Marcus felt their gratitude, a warmth amidst the cold, knowing he had avenged Emily and countless others. He turned his attention back to the journal, hoping to find more clues to dismantle the Order of Eternal Night completely. The final pages contained a map, marked with several locations across Ebonridge, where the Order conducted their rituals. Marcus knew that these places held the remnants of the Watcher's influence, and if left unchecked, the Dark Legacy could continue. With renewed determination, he tucked the journal into his coat, and left the manor. Outside, the city of Ebonridge seemed to awaken from its long slumber. The grey skies began to clear, revealing a faint glow of dawn. Marcus made his way to the first location on the map, an old cemetery known for its unmarked graves. As he walked through the overgrown pathways, he could feel the lingering presence of the Order's dark magic. The air was thick with the memories of those who had suffered, but Marcus pressed on, guided by the spirits. At the heart of the cemetery, Marcus found a stone altar, its surface etched with ancient symbols. He placed his hand on the altar, and the symbols began to glow with an eerie light. The spirits of the cemetery gathered around him, their forms barely visible in the early morning mist. With the locket in hand, Marcus performed a ritual of cleansing, reciting incantations he had learned from the journal. The glow intensified, and the dark energy was slowly purged from the altar. As the first rays of sunlight broke through the trees, Marcus felt a sense of peace wash over the cemetery. The spirits that had been trapped by the Order's dark magic were finally free, their forms dissipating into the light. Marcus knew there were still other locations to cleanse, but this victory gave him hope. He walked away from the cemetery, ready to continue his quest to rid Ebonridge of the Order's shadow once and for all. Marcus's quest to cleanse Ebonridge of the Order's dark influence took him to various locations marked on the map. Each place held its own horrors, remnants of the Order's malevolent activities. From haunted warehouses to abandoned churches, Marcus encountered spirits bound by pain and sorrow. With each ritual of cleansing, he felt the city's weight lift slightly, the spirit's gratitude guiding his path. The final location on the map was an old, decrepit lighthouse on the outskirts of the city. The lighthouse had stood for centuries, its beacon long extinguished. As Marcus approached, he felt a chill run down his spine. This place held the heart of the Order's power. The spirits here were restless, their whispers a cacophony of despair and anger. Marcus knew that this final confrontation would be the most challenging. Inside the lighthouse, Marcus ascended the spiral staircase, each step echoing through the hollow structure. 
The air grew colder and thicker with each step, and the walls seemed to close in around him. At the top he found a large circular chamber filled with arcane symbols and ritualistic artifacts. In the center stood an altar, its surface etched with the dark legacy of the Order. Marcus steeled himself for the final ritual. He placed the silver locket on the altar and began the incantations from the journal. The air around him crackled with energy, and the spirits of the Order's victims gathered, their forms more solid and defined than before. As Marcus's voice rose in the final chant, the symbols on the altar glowed with an intense, blinding light. The spirits joined in, their voices creating a harmonious yet haunting chorus that resonated through the lighthouse. The final note of the chant echoed, and then silence fell. The oppressive darkness that had once shrouded the lighthouse lifted, replaced by a sense of calm and peace. The spirits, now free, offered Marcus their profound gratitude before dissipating into the light. As the first rays of dawn broke through the windows, Marcus knew that Ebonridge was finally free from the Order's dark influence. He descended the lighthouse with a sense of accomplishment, ready to face whatever new mysteries awaited him. As Marcus descended the lighthouse, the weight of his final victory settled heavily upon him. The spirits were free, and the city of Ebonridge was no longer under the shadow of the Order of Eternal Night. However, the battle had taken its toll. The silver locket, once a beacon of light and power, now hung lifeless around his neck. His connection to the spirit world had been severed, leaving him in a profound silence that felt more like a void than peace. Marcus walked through the city streets, now bathed in the warm glow of dawn. The townspeople began to stir, unaware of the darkness that had been lifted from their lives. Marcus felt a pang of sorrow, knowing that he could no longer hear the whispers of the spirits or feel their guiding presence. He had always thought of his ability as a curse, but now, in its absence, he realized it had been a part of his identity, a gift that connected him to something greater. The final ritual at the lighthouse had required a tremendous sacrifice. The journal had warned of the price, but Marcus had not fully understood until the moment his connection was severed. He felt an emptiness that the victory could not fill. As he passed by familiar places, he saw them in a new light, devoid of the ethereal touches that had once been so vivid to him. The world felt less vibrant, more distant, Emily's spirit had been among the last to depart, her gratitude and sorrow intertwined in a final, silent farewell. Marcus knew she was at peace, but he wished he could have spoken to her one last time. The other spirits too had offered their thanks, but their absence now felt like a void in his heart. Marcus knew that his work as a detective would continue, but without his unique gift, it would never be the same. As the day wore on, Marcus found himself at the edge of the city, looking out over the horizon. He had saved Ebonridge, freed countless souls, and ended the Order's reign of terror. Yet the cost had been great. He had lost a part of himself, and he would have to find a new way to navigate his life and work. The city was safe, but Marcus was left to grapple with his personal loss, knowing that some sacrifices, though necessary, left indelible marks on the soul. 